Hey everybody, welcome to our weekly Ecosystem Office Hours call. I am your host, Jinx, and I'm joined, as always, by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. We'll start things off this morning with Zach. You want to uh, do our community announcements? Yeah, um, I, the big one I think everybody knows is Retro PGF. So um, last I checked, we had a perfect 25% participation, which is, you know, it's it's great to have uh, 18 people voting, but of 72 means we've got a, a large group of people who haven't voted yet. So if you are a voter, uh, please, please, please get your votes in. We've got another office hours later today. That's at 1 o'clock Pacific or 4 o'clock Eastern. Um, or you can just DM me or Ben or Murdad uh, with any questions you have, and I'm happy to like jump on and, and walk you through anything. Um, but the biggest thing I would recommend is please just log in, make sure your wallet's working, make sure you have access. The last thing I want is for you to go in Friday morning to try to vote and realize that you are unable to access something. Um, and there's a lot of money up for grabs, guys. So you know this is a pretty big deal to make sure that the right projects are getting rewarded for the work that they've done. So. Um, we're encouraging everybody to take it seriously because it's not a negligible amount of money. So that's the big one. Retro PGF uh, cutoff is midnight on Friday Pacific, but please try to get it in earlier. And then um, the plan is once Retro PGF wraps up, we're going to go back in and start pushing creds again to um, make sure that everybody's got their uh, basically got the, the issues that they brought up the last time we tried to push it through addressed and we can um, yeah, get more DAO voters in. You were seeing that especially in things like Retro PGF where um, just some some voter attrition has happened. Uh, what else? Uh, I think there's probably some big announcements. I'm going to put them in, um, in chat uh, later this week. So Thursday or Friday, look for an announcement coming out. Um, and then ECC is coming up in two weeks. So just putting that on the radar. If anybody's going to be over in Brussels, uh, reach out to the foundation, let us know. We'd love to talk to you, love to see you, uh, maybe even have a beverage. Um, and then uh, during that time, some of the regular scheduled meetings will actually be canceled just because nobody's going to be around to run them. So just a heads up that um, the first and second week of July will just be a little different from the usual schedule. I think that's the big ones. Back to you, Jinx. Excellent. Shane, uh, protocol updates? Yeah. Uh, so uh, this week, um, the uh, uh, well, actually, at, at at the end of last week, uh, the lean, uh, the lean pocket kind of client functionality was added to uh, was was fully added to Shannon. So uh, the idea is it would operate very similar to how lean operates today. Uh, so you can have one full uh, blockchain and then. Obviously, have a lot of accounts on top of that uh, to save on uh, storage uh, storage space. So, uh, so that was added in, and really, right now, uh, between the Shannon SDK, the probabilistic proof and claims, uh, and relay mining, all those are basically code complete, and they're more or less going through E to E testing right now. Um, there have been some challenges with some of the E to E testing, and so that's. Uh, being looked at to optimize for that. Um, on uh, kind of a more approachable note, uh, a, a lot of changes have happened to the uh, pocket docs. So for uh, a little while now, I've been talking about uh, a quote Shannon overview that kind of goes over everything Shannon. Well, that's now been fully added to the pocket docs. So you can get an understanding of all the different actors. Uh, you can get an understanding of uh, what are the technical differences between Morse and Shannon. You can dive into uh, like specifically what uh, what uh, features are being migrated over uh, or what features don't even need to exist anymore. So there's a whole kind of technical breakdown on what that migration uh, kind of looks like and what's being carried over and what doesn't need to be carried over. So all of that is in the pocket docs um, uh, under Shannon. So there's a Shannon tab and then uh, under there, you can literally just explore on whatever topics you find interesting. Uh, and we also have a little blurb there uh, about tokenomics as well. So yeah, uh, really, 
the idea is anyone could go there uh, who's interested in kind of understanding what are the differences and, and how does Shannon all operate together. And you should be able to get a pretty good idea just by uh, thumbing through the docs uh, on the areas that you're interested in. So wanted to point that out. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty sure that's that's uh, pretty sure that's all that we have to uh, update this week. We are laying down the kind of the plan right now um, for the phase two of uh, uh, testnet. So testnet phase two, um, which will include probabilistic proofs and relay mining, uh, at least and lean client, and that will kind of be the focus of testing all those in the next um, uh, the next alpha test net. So anyways, so work right now is going on there to fully scope that out and then uh, hopefully get an announcement out. Uh, yeah, in the next uh, uh, week or so. Excellent. And how is the, the total population of test net? Are you still looking for more people to join? Um, let me, I, I could take a look actually. Um, yeah, we've had uh, uh, a number of folks joining. Uh, and really the the focus of this test net, so we have twelve uh, we have twelve suppliers that uh, have been deployed. Uh, gateways, we have twelve gateways that have also been deployed. Um, and so, yeah, really the focus of of this is to focus on the deployment side itself um, and uh, uh, be able to be online for uh, some testing that the team has been doing. So other than uh, other than that, uh, there aren't any real specific, uh, uh, real specific tasks for anyone to do other than deploy and provide feedback. Uh, in the next phase, that's where there's going to be some more involved testing because uh, relay mining, probabilistic proofs, all these things need to kind of be tested on a, on a larger scale. So that's where testnet will obviously come in. So that's the, uh, uh, so if people want to test out the deployment side of uh suppliers and gateways now is absolutely the time. Uh, we're also working out uh, a way for, because um, we want to include participation, uh, people that are providing feedback and providing value to testnet, uh, a way to get, uh, uh, basically we want to use the a coming retro PGF that we're looking at uh, for like Q4 this year, um, another round and allowing folks that provide value to the testnet, be able to submit to a um, uh, retro PGF round or uh, round there. So uh, it's so there is uh, we we don't have everything fully mapped out, but that's what we're wanting to do with in terms of capturing out uh, people that are participating and adding value. So if you find anything, adding GitHub issues, talking about it in uh, Discord, things like that that allow the team to improve uh, the tools, all of that. Will be uh, will be to benefit for the retro PGF round coming uh, later this year. And is there a a, a one shot link that uh, people can go to to uh, uh, figure out how to participate in uh, the test map? Actually, Oshansky's announcement is is uh, pretty much the the best one here. I'll link to it. Uh, yeah, that that was pretty much like the best uh, uh, summary of just how to jump in. So I'll link to that here. Uh, here it is. Yeah, let me link to that here in the chat. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Okay, gateway updates. Uh, Gabby, any uh, Grove updates? Uh, nothing major to report this week. Thanks. Excellent. And uh, is Blade here? No, I don't see him. Okay. Um, Porters? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> just a quick quick update. Um, we are starting to see, finally see some traffic coming through that's getting recorded on Pocket Scan. Um, and also have been experiencing some, some strange, strange like business issues with our partners with Tyco and not to get too in the weeds it's just um encouraging encouraging them to use the services that they bought which I didn't think was going to be a thing that I, we would have to do um but uh 
yeah, things are things are moving forward and we're we're beyond like the tech really the tech push and into the you know relationship development and uh, encouraging more use on the on the gateway. And we have a a new team member that joined us um, who's got a lot of experience in the infrastructure space, and so he'll be er, Web two infrastructure and has been working in Web three for the last couple of years, and so expect them to be a powerful add to the team to help us uh, yeah streamline our process and get more relays coming. Excellent. DevDow, anything to report on y'all's side? Thanks, thanks. Uh, nothing major at the moment. It's a bit of a sort of slow burn towards getting the gateway live so we can start testing in production. Right now, the focus is on merging in and um, wiring up how we're handling payments. Um, still optimistically hoping for the sort of end of this month, early next month to start sending relays, but we'll have to see how all of that uh, goes in trying to bring all of the different pieces that the team have worked on together. So a bit of a slow burn at the minute, but still optimistically aiming for kind of end of this month, early next month. Fantastic. And as part of just, you know, I guess out of my own curiosity and in, in regards to the greater strategy, are y'all planning on on writing up a retrospective of, of what it takes to actually get a gateway going and distributing that out? Ooh, that's a good question. I assume it was aimed at me, mate, just because I was speaking last. Uh, yep. I will put it to Crypto, the primary dev, and see how he feels about it. I know he's um, pretty excited about some of the stuff that he's built. Um, he's tried to, where possible, sort of create things in-house like rust libraries for them so there could be some cool stuff in there and then more generally about kind of how he's built the thing let me see if he's got some some interest to do that uh, i don't know if he's a writer himself if not maybe there's someone else in the team that, that might be able to kind of lift that knowledge out of his brain and, uh, and put something out nice hey it's uh Jeremy, just to jump in um this is something we can maybe commission from the day maybe to get someone to maybe interview and write up uh, take some videos, maybe partner up. We can think about the best way to present it, but to uh, speak to all the gateway operators, uh, get their feedback, talk about how they're getting on. It could be quite an interesting historical artifact for Pocket where it is and where we expect it to go in the next three, six, 12 months. Um, and I think it'd be helpful information to feed into our documentation, but also I think it would be cool just to hear all these learnings and actually hear a bit more from behind the scenes of all these gateway operators and who's actually building um, the gateway kit itself. Brilliant. I think it's it's one of those things where, uh, you know, as we talk about expanding gateways across the protocol, having some good first person accounts of the process would be highly helpful. And I think think that brings us to the end of gateway updates. Any gateway updates that uh, we've missed out on? I'll take that as a no. Okay, cool. Well, we don't have anything, I don't think, unless I've uh, forgotten something, which at my age is not impossible, but I don't think that we have any uh, scheduled or planned presentations today. So. I'll open up the floor to y'all. Who's got something you want to discuss? Questions, topics? It's your hour, so we can use it or not. We can tell silly jokes about technology.
Well, if nobody's actually got anything going, I'm happy to give you all the, the next 40 minutes of your life back. I'll give us a couple more minutes here to see if anybody decides they don't want to be shy. Oh, one, uh, one thing worth mentioning, uh, I'm going to be putting up uh, Gandalf 2.0 up for a vote. It's been up for a week. Um, haven't received any uh, any actionable items on there. Um, there have been a little bit of discussion, but more just kind of on the technical side of it. Um, so anyways, uh, I'll be putting that up for a vote uh, later today uh, now that it's been on the forum for a week. So that's something to just be aware of. Beautiful. I'm looking forward to voting in favor of that. question yeah sure question for uh probably for zach um on the you you mentioned earlier the voting drop off on the creds thing uh what percentage of the voters have have not like moved over from the old voting platform like the gov dot pocket i'm just curious is is that related to the drop off you think um, you know, that's a great question. I think the most I've ever seen voting on snapshot was 40. So I'll just say that there's a potential that some people didn't move over, but I don't, I don't have that actual number. Um, and in fact, if I wanted to go, maybe I can actually do a quick check here. Yeah, I'd be My, curious. I, go on. Go on. I, no, I, I was just curious, uh, because I think the last one that I saw in snapshot had quite a few more votes. Yeah, I'm just looking at snapshot here. I mean, so, so just jump in, Steve. What's the question? What What's the most number of people who've ever voted on snapshot? Is it? Not really. That's not really the question. I'm just curious if if any of the drop off might have to do with people not having moved over to or or seen the the move to the new voting platform. Move away from snapshot. Sorry, I, I think I might be missing something because we're still using Snapshot now, right? It's just I think we have 67 or so people with votes just only, I think, in the last 18 months or so, the most number of votes we've had is something like maybe 39 or something like that, or is it 40? Yeah, I think he's referring to the, just the fact that the uh, retro PGF is on a standalone platform. And Ramiro, uh, okay, notes sorry, yeah, so that, that's, that's me. Yeah. That. The voting, sorry, the Steve, voting, yeah. yeah, the voting process is oh. different for the retro. P, uh, yeah, P, yeah. Like, I, I didn't and, realize uh, when I went when I went to go vote for it. Uh, uh, Zatar had to show me or had to tell me like, oh, it's you know, it's not being voted there. So I, I'm sure I missed it, but I'm wondering if anybody else did too. Got it. Yeah. That's yeah. A great sorry. Point. And you also need to pay gas, right? Which I think the foundation is, will sponsor for anyone who needs it. It's a tiny bit of gas. But if you don't have any on uh, optimism, yeah, we will fund it. I, I think that is a good point. Probably isn't in everyone's typical way of working. Um, but we have done, but interestingly, saying that um, most votes actually do uh, not have any votes really until the last couple of days. And when they do, actually, that's largely triggered by. People like Zach DMing people on Discord directly because uh, he has the DMs of every single voter because um, you, you obviously need that to uh, get registered as a voter in our current system. Um, and that usually triggers the kind of the last minute flurry of, uh, of votes. So, um, but yeah, it's a good open question around how do we get um, the eyeballs and ears of uh, all of our voters and what's the best way to get that to cut across with forum Discord and whatever other medium, particularly as we are hoping to upgrade to creds, and that will be up in the system again. Yeah, Steve, yeah, I, 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 guess, I, I jump in. Sorry. I think that, I think that actually, like, that is definitely a piece of it, but um, 
I think the the bigger part of it is it's not like a go in and vote for one person. Like it takes time. And so I've had the feedback from a few people that they open it up and they're like, oh, this isn't a read a, a five minute thing and vote. Um, and so that's I think that's the bigger barrier to entry than the platform. Um, although I could definitely be wrong here. Uh, and we've done a lot to try to communicate that it's in a different spot. To your point, you know, it's easy to miss it. I did my DMs last night. Um, but my my guess would be that it's the commitment of time that's a bigger barrier than the new location. Yeah, Ramiro mentioned that as well. And I, you know, like it's when I first figured out and I had to ask some questions too about how to use it. Um, but uh, figuring out how to engage with the interface. And there's a number of, of entries, like more than you might think. So when you get in there, it can be a little bit overwhelming trying to go through them all and familiarize yourself with all of them, um, especially since there are some people who've done like behind the scenes things that are up for projects that, that maybe you're not as familiar with or you don't recognize the names right off the bat. So it does take a little bit of time to get through, but it's certainly a worthwhile endeavor and I encourage everyone to participate. Any other questions about that? I have a quick question about that because I'm not going to be able to make the office hours later today. Um, are we to use the same, our, the wallet that has our pocket voting token in it for the voting? And if we're, if we need some, some ETH, is that the one that you get, that you have the ETH sent to it? Yeah, you can just, um, it, it's going to be the same address as Snapshot. That's the one that we put in. Um, I can't confirm this right now, but um, if you need to change that wallet address, please let me know sooner rather than later. Um, and we can, I, I don't know if we can switch from one address to another, um, but I can ask that question for you. So somebody had said that they use um, like a non-standard wallet address and they wanted to switch. Um, and then if you do need ETH on Optimism, just DM me and I'm just going to send you over like a dollar fifty in ETH. Um, and it, again, you only need to do, I think, one transaction on it, which is a few cents. But um, that shouldn't be a barrier. It's just the bridging cost, money, and time. So yeah, DM me. I'll, I'll send you a buck. Um, and just log in to see if you can vote. That would be my, my first, uh, my request would be go just click connect wallet, see if you can log in, if you get the option to vote. And if so, you can wait until last minute to get your votes in yeah Truly. i did that yes i did that yesterday and i just connected the same wallet that i had connected uh previously but there's yeah there's nothing in the the uh the eth wallet that i was using and so i tried to vote today and it or, or yesterday rather and it stopped me and i figured it's because there was a fee and i didn't have anything in it so i'm hoping it's just a matter of transferring some some funds but it didn't work immediately yeah steve just send me your send me your address in a dm and i'll just send you some eth right now um it's almost definitely that that you need a, a few bucks for gas and um we know this is an issue and so this isn't our feedback for this round but um, next round, we're either going to make it gasless or we're going to automatically seed every voter with a, a small amount of um, of gas. That way we don't run into this issue again. But on the plus okay, side, cool. that means that everyone uh, is getting at least a little funding from the retro BGF. <laughs> well, Jinx, it's coming from my pocket, so let's not advertise that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's so much the funds as the friction, you know, just like, uh, it, it, you know, if, if it's hard for, for people to, to vote, they're probably going to not vote. And so like, that's, yeah. that's, that was my concern. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Maybe actually what I'll do is I'll look and see who's left to vote and I can just send them all a buck and we'll make that, we'll make that part go away. Beautiful. Also, this is a question that I had. So if anyone else, um, you know, that has the same question, uh, if you have a conflict of interest or if you think a project didn't have any impact at all, um, you can not add a particular entry to a slot entirely. 
Um, so for anyone who was curious on how to approach those things, especially with the, the conflict of interest part. All right, any other questions there? All right. Well, in that case, do we have any other open questions across any topics in the ecosystem? I'll give it another minute or so and see if anybody has stopped being shy. Okay, well, it seems like we're all in a pretty good place this week, so we'll wrap it up here for now. I will see y'all again same time next week, same channel. Happy pocketing. Thanks, Jinx. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jinx.